Coming up today on Locked On Hornets, I go solo and play a bunch of sound. Brandon Miller and Grant Williams got to speak to them at exit day. So I play a bunch of sound from their interviews. Then look at Steve Clifford compared to this new head coach, whoever it may be. What are the differences going to be? And do we like some of the differences that would come from a new coach? That's all today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cause we live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. As you can tell, no Doug Branson today. I'm going solo. You can still check out his work, though, on his Substack, stack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. You can check out his subtext at, well, lots of subs over there. It's a subway with Doug Branson, so you can check out all that. Also, listen to me on the radio, 92.7 FM, Sports Radio, 92.7 WFNZ, Wes and Walker, every weekday from 12 to 3. In fact, Wes and Walker, it's the very show that, we interviewed Brandon Miller and Grant Williams on exit day. And as far as just to show where we'll host at Spectrum Center and the Hornets do a great job of giving us a, a bunch of different athletes, Steve Clifford, we've had the chance to talk with a bunch of figures with the organization. It felt like this group, Grant Williams, Brandon Miller, and Trey Mann, felt like that was the best group of interviews that we had. I highly suggest you go check it out on WFNZ.com. But I was proud of those. Like, we did okay in other times. Like, we, we had good conversations. But I really thought we got a lot from Brandon. I, I feel like we got a lot from Grant, too. And I think the reason we got a lot from him, a lot of times, one, Grant's just really good at this. But I think a lot of times people are so excited to get the offseason started. And so they're in a good mood. And anybody that <clears throat> creates content knows half of the battle is being in a good mood. And so if Grant Williams is in a good mood and the same thing with Brandon Miller, the season's over and no, it didn't end on a note that they would like. Grant even tells you that it feels weird that he's not in the postseason. At least they're able to forget about the new stuff and move on to something different. So uh, these are pretty good. I got a few sound bites for you today. We'll start in the first segment with Brandon Miller. And, you know, Brandon had a lot of interesting things to say about, you know, his role as a leader going forward. Everybody remembers the viral clip of him calling out defenders or lack thereof, not getting back in transition defense. And man, he's already barking at some of the vets on the team and everything is totally fine. After the game, they have a conversation and it's all respect. I think Brandon even telling you, well, I'll let him tell you. Uh, here's a few sound bites. Let's play the first one here from Brandon Miller on Media Exit Day. I think on my list right now is, uh, you know, building, of course, building uh, muscle mass, gaining weight. Um, I, think that's, I think that's one of the parts of my, my game that kind of struggles. Um, so I think just I think once I get that, I, I'm going to be great. Um, you know, just being able to take bumps and, and contacts through 82 games, I think that's uh, important important thing to you know add to to you know someone's body uh, NBA player's body for sure yeah Brandon Miller talking about what he's going to work on throughout the offseason that seems to be the number one point right if Brandon gets a lot stronger then you start to see him get to the rim more and you know with with some of our problems with him finishing at the rim and that ability coming out of college that there was a real issue there if you look at some of the advanced numbers, or not even so advanced, if you just look at his percentage at the basket, he was actually fine. He wasn't great. He wasn't all-star, superstar level. He was fine once he got there. He was in like the 48th, 49th percentile. So right there, basically average with peers at his position. But he just didn't get there a lot. That's when you start to go down into the 20th percentile. But even still, that's a good sign that he's finishing at an average rate for somebody that didn't finish at an average rate at the basket in college. I think one, there's a lot of, there's a lot of easy looks that he got when cutting. He's a great cutter, right? So if you cut and your defender isn't keeping up with you, 
a smart passer will hit you and then you'll slam it home. We got to see a few of those this season because his IQ is just so high. And he wasn't without his tough finishes at the rim. There would be streaks where we got to see that quite a bit. Uh, that's good. That's all very good practice. It's just the frequency. And I think that's where the strength comes into play. It's not even necessarily finishing, right? He was he was fine. We hope that he gets better at that. But it's the frequency in which he does get to the basket. And I think once he adds on more muscle there, and Doug gives you all the muscle watch reports on everyhornetsboxscore.com, I think that's when we'll really start to see him take flight even more, which will be scary. Like what We already know the kind of bodies that he caught dunking on dudes this season. Now when he's stronger and you don't get knocked off your spot as much, yeah, man, it's going to be all the more exciting. Let's hear another soundbite from Brandon. Me being a young leader, um, I feel like you have to, you know, lead and, you know, have those tough conversations like that, um, you know, where, where you, you know, you're on your teammates. Um, and I feel like you will want your teammates to be on you just as hard as I'm on. So um, I think that's kind of one of the things, you know, I take pride in is just the leadership part, lead, leading vocally. Um, and, you know, I think that's uh, I think I did a great job on that this year. Yeah, he did do a great job at that. That's the part I was talking about right before we started playing the sound. Just seems like Brandon is ready for this. You know, the mentality that he has, it's really impressive. And I think that's something we noticed right away. There are there are things that you notice from players immediately, whether it be summer league, whether it be preseason, whether it be the start of the regular season. Like I, you know, shocker, I'm about to mention PJ Washington, but I didn't like PJ Washington as the pick when they made it. I thought it was underwhelming. I thought it was going to be boring. And maybe that even was still the case for some people. I know he's polarizing, but I remember in preseason, he was getting a decent amount of run and he just looked like he belonged out there on the court for the most part. And then what does he do? First game, he hits seven threes. And yes, he would be an inconsistent score from there on out. But it did look like he was pretty immediately a decent, good rotation NBA player. With Brandon, you can see in the first game, what was it? He struggled maybe a little bit shooting at the beginning. And then there were so many times that you would see in the first quarter, or excuse me, in the first like stretch of games or so, maybe in the first 10 games, he might struggle early on. And then he would fill it up in the fourth because he was ready for the moment. Brandon Miller came into the league ready for the moment. And I think it was apparent to everybody who watched. He has such the right mentality. It's the right attitude. And I can't help but continue to be impressed with not only just having that leadership quality, which is showing up. I mean, this guy only played one year in college and it's showing up. Not only does he have that, but he also has this engaging enough personality in the locker room to where people gravitate towards him. Because he is this fun guy. Like, you're getting the best of both worlds with Brandon's personality. I think we love that as fans because we get to build a relationship with him. But so do his teammates. And there are the Kobe Bryants out there who are all serious all the time. We know through plenty of player accounts and docs that we've seen, whether it be the Team USA doc, the Redeem team, whether it be whatever you've watched on Kobe. Kobe was not here for the foolishness. He was here to work, and he was here to work nonstop. And yeah, that's great for Kobe. We know about Michael. He had that same kind of mentality. Brandon is here to work and work nonstop. Steve Clifford told you that, that Brandon doesn't need to be motivated every day. When Steve Clifford steps down and he tells you at the podium that he needs to be motivated every day so everybody else can be, because it's not fair to ask everyone else to get ready and approach the game the correct way if he doesn't do it, he says, I don't have to worry about Brandon because he always approaches the game the right way. He's already um, getting – he's already uh, for practice immediately, like done. We don't have to worry about that. And the fact that you can have that kind of camaraderie in the locker room as well with your players, I think that matters. I think that builds chemistry, and maybe it's over-talked about, but I actually do think that matters. Uh, last one, let's play one more soundbite from Brandon Miller before we start to dabble into some Grant Williams sound on the other side. I know the injuries um... – kind of took a played a big part in you know our season and our lineup um so you know this point in time I was starting at the two um but sometimes I was starting at the three I think it was kind of um you know different for me just you know starting at you know two different positions um I think you have to you know of course you got to learn more plays but um still gonna have to guard you know some of the bit the best players in the NBA um so I think that was kind of my biggest adjustment was just you know playing the the the, the two and the three 
He's versatile. That's another thing we love about Brandon. And we could we knew that coming in. I just I don't think anybody figured we'd have the same amount of injuries that we did last year. And that would mean Brandon Miller had to take more of a responsibility. And I was interested in more in that comment where, you know, when you have to take on so many roles and you have to show that versatility immediately too. He talked about guarding the opponent's uh, best player and how hard that was. So whether it be in the backcourt, whether it be at that small forward position, Brandon Miller had to guard a lot of really talented guys. And he was already one of the better defenders on this team, something they need to address in the draft and hopefully free agency. We'll see what the Hornets do. But Brandon already being a better defender than what? 85% of the roster? Then yeah, Brandon, yeah, it, he appreciates the work and the improvement on that end. And you just can't help but be impressed when you have an interview and then he starts to open up a little bit. He gets to have fun with you, but also he lets you know what's going on in his mind. I think that's really cool. So that's some good stuff from Brandon Miller. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. We'll talk a little more about Brandon, but also get into some Grant Williams sound and what his future role may look like. That's coming up next on Locked on Hornets. This episode is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. And when it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. Maybe you've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. But now you need to take all those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses. That's Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, they've been helping out, whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's Yahoo Finance. Dot com. As always, we appreciate everybody that helps support the show. Not only do we appreciate Yahoo Finance, but we also want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing. We got a lot of sports going on. FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, that's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from the slap shots to the home runs to the slam dunks, all that good stuff, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Plenty more to come here on Locked On Hornets. Let's go to some Grant Williams sound, shall we? I thought Grant was really good. He's got this. Me and Doug were joking about it <laughs> when when I sent him over some of the audio. Grant has this very distinct way of talking, and it's almost like ASMR for Charlotte Hornets fans. Grant Williams, if he starts releasing some of those YouTube videos, I think he can make a killing. And so you'll see what I'm talking about here. Let's go to the first sound bite on Grant Williams during his time here in Charlotte, and we'll just play the randomizer. It's fun. Um, you know, I enjoy the playmaking side of things. So um, it wasn't necessarily that I was trying to score every possession, but being involved, whether it's screening, whether it's um, playing out of flash where you catch the ball and you can have guys play around you, um, definitely felt way more involved here in Charlotte than anywhere I've ever been, uh, which is fun you know something that i don't know how it looks next season with Lamelo back and uh, potentially mark being back and stuff like that so um maybe it's unexpected to be consistently happening but at the same time um i thought i took advantage of the spots that i had and and looked good doing it and played well and i'm thankful for that grant williams usage was so different this season or at least his time with the hornets than it was with any other team that's boston or dallas and we know it wasn't very good with the mavericks that actually was a little bit higher than it was 
in Boston because you have so many more talented players. Like there's there's the Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. You get the idea. But with Grant being here, according to Cleaning the Glass, his usage was at 80%, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think the next highest number on that list is 29. And I actually showed him those results, and he was surprised that it was that different. But he talked about it right there, how much he enjoyed being a part of the offense. And Steve Clifford did too. You know, I think Steve ran a lot of their action through Grant as well, and I think that's because they view him as a smart passer. And while the turnovers were a little too high at times, I remember I kept complaining about it. The turnovers actually started to dwindle down a little bit as the season went on, which is what you want. I, Grant coming in, after you trade PJ, they're always going to be compared to one another. But what Grant did coming in, knocking down three-point shots, being a nice playmaker, the, the rebounding was better here in Charlotte than it's ever been. And so was maybe not the playmaking, just more volume of playmaking. But he showed a lot of things to be a really good role player. And I can't help but wonder if you start to talk about Grant as this guy that's going to be here for a long time, it feels like he'll be one of these beloved Hornets, not only having the local angle, him growing up in Charlotte, but if he's here for a while, I could see people starting to have this Marvin Williams type of affection for him where, no, he's not the best player on the roster at any given time, but he's going to be rock solid. He's going to defend. He's going to be consistent. I think that's the reason why people had such a hard time enjoying PJ's tenure in Charlotte. It's because he was offensively wildly inconsistent, and people didn't love his defense this past season either. But with Grant, pretty rock solid for him, and everybody goes through shooting slumps, but it's not going to be the up-and-down roller coaster that you might have gotten with PJ. Like with or. And, with Marvin, maybe every year he would shoot 38 from three and then maybe go down to like 35. But for the most part, you felt very good about Marvin going out there every single game. I feel like if Grant's here for what? Maybe just the duration of his contract, three, four years. If he signs another one here in Charlotte and he's here for five, it feels like maybe if he does enough, the love of the from the fan base could propel him into the top 40 list whenever we do this list again. We've done top 30. We've done top 35 for that anniversary. We'll see it in four years and maybe give Grant Williams a shout in the top 40. That could happen. Let's play another soundbite from Grant during our interview with him on Wesson Walker. The role can be whatever it is as long as we're winning. Um, my goal is um, just to be able to come in with uh, a great mentality of competitive mind. And understanding that from the start of the season, it's, it's a matter of how you set the tone, um, both from training camp, but also from training camp with the new staff, like, you know, having um, the level of aggression that you need, because whether it's a rookie head coach, whether it's a tenured coach, no matter who it is, um, whatever style they want to play, being able to fully engulf and, and uh, try and learn it from this from this beginning. And so that role can be whatever it is, as long as we're winning. I feel like Grant. Caught a lot of, I don't feel like I know. Grant Williams caught a lot of heat for being this guy trying to challenge Luka Doncic, and now he's catching a lot of strays. We've discussed that a little bit here on Locked On Hornets and Wesson Walker. Grant even told you he might do that with LaMelo at the podium. This wasn't in our interview, it was when he spoke at the podium. He told you, yeah, we need the best from LaMelo. If we're going to be the best team that we can be, then we need LaMelo out there, one, and then we need the best possible play from LaMelo that we can get. And so Grant might challenge him. I hope that goes okay. I don't know how well it went between he and Luca. I know Jason Tatum certainly likes Grant Williams as a teammate. Maybe with Grant Williams coming in and playing his early years in Boston, maybe he didn't feel as comfortable being that challenger, certainly to this degree, as a first-year player because you want to ease into a situation. You know, you're going into... <laughs> The, along with the Lakers, the most historic, the franchise with the most tradition in the NBA. And so you get drafted by Boston. All right, that's already one thing you might feel. You also have Jason Tatum, who is a budding superstar. You might not feel, you might have a different dynamic. So then after four years in Boston, you feel something different. Now you feel like you've arrived as this role player and leader to get the best out of your star. And then you try that out in Dallas and doesn't go so well. He gets traded for a reason. And here he is in Charlotte. I, I wonder if you just fine tune it a little bit. 
Maybe it doesn't change anything because it just didn't work for Luca, but it might work for LaMelo. Maybe he learned some lessons in challenging Luca, and then he can apply those lessons to challenging LaMelo. I hope it goes okay because I, I think Grant can be a really good player in the future. And if he's going to get the best out of LaMelo, that's great. We all love that. And Brandon Miller, by the way, is going to be a part of this too. If we're thinking about Brandon being that star player, then I imagine Grant's going to challenge Brandon. It feels like we know Brandon should respond to that pretty well with how competitive he is. And LaMelo's competitive. Steve Clifford tells you the desire to win may not be seen because he's not out there, but it's also because they don't play in a lot of big games. And once we get bigger games with this team, once, fingers crossed, hopefully that happens, then it will be more visible. And I think that's going to help, I think, the perception of LaMelo. At least I hope it does. And I think Grant challenging LaMelo could be good as long as it happens the right way. So there's some Brandon Miller sound. There's some Grant Williams sound. We do have one more segment to go, though, coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. I want to go back to another comment that Grant had about Steve Clifford. Same thing with Brandon Miller, too. They both shared some stuff about Cliff. I want to get to those qualities compared to whoever this new coach would be coming up next on Locked on Hornets. Did want to tell you real quickly that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, or over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. And so you know that LinkedIn is the place to go. If you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional, and you can do that on LinkedIn. And as always, we appreciate LinkedIn for helping us out here on Locked On Hornets. So make sure you go to that site if you're looking to hire anywhere for your small business. And we know that LinkedIn LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Still more to come right here on Locked on Hornets. Going with Grant Williams, that interview, him shedding a little more light on what Steve Clifford is like behind in the, the practice doors, if you will. You know, I, I've asked a few players about some of the angrier moments from Steve and the, the worst butt chewing you got in practice. And like I asked Nick Smith Jr. about this one time, and it felt like he was a little scared to tell me all of the details. And so he didn't exactly tell me all of them. And he was saying, oh, yeah, he got mad at me one time for messing up defensively. I was like, anything else, Nick? It's like, no, nah, that's, that's about it. And he started smiling. I was like, OK, you know, I'm not going to press the rookie on it if he doesn't feel comfortable sharing some of those details with me. But Grant had no problem. And Brandon Miller really didn't have any problem talking about Steve. I the, the funny moment from uh, Grant was, you know, I, I, because he has such admiration for Steve Clifford, you know, he talked about how he was caught off guard when Cliff told the team that he would be stepping down and there would be a new head coach next season. Grant didn't like it. I think some of the other players wanted Steve to come back, but they respect it. And, you know, I asked him about his admiration for Coach Clifford. Did he know him before he took, you know, or he was traded to Charlotte? And he said he didn't know him, but Kimba, Kimba Walker actually talked to Grant before he came to Charlotte. And Kimba told Grant, he's going to be the best coach you've ever had. He's going to be one of the best ones, and he's also going to be your favorite one. And so Grant tells the story. One, he immediately knew that Coach Cliff would be his favorite one or one of them. And then he told a story about a time that he got yelled at and he got cursed out. And it might have been during a game. It might have been during practice, but I think it was during a game where Grant is frustrated with what's going on offensively. He runs by Steve Clifford and says, run the beep bleeping play. I can't say what he said there. I don't know exactly what play it was, but he wanted to run a certain play 
And Coach Clifford said, don't tell me what bleep and play to run. I decide what plays to run. I'm going to decide whatever play I want to run. And then you run it. <laughs> and then Grant said, like, look, even in the moment, I respected that. And then when I watched it back on film, the play I wanted to run actually wasn't going to work. And what we were doing was the best way to attack that defense. And that's how you gain my respect. And Brandon Miller talked about how he got cursed out for messing up defensively one time, but that he respects it, that he welcomes that coaching. And that's how Steve Clifford ends up being beloved by the players or maybe even hated if you can't take that. Maybe there are some players that just can't take it. I think most of the players on the Hornets roster can because they appreciate Steve's brutal honesty, which is sometimes brutal and also sometimes enlightening. Sometimes his honesty is welcomed. As, as far as it being some positive connotation. But I think most of the players here respect that, even if I would guess a lot of players in the NBA probably don't. Brandon does. Grant does. I think Miles welcomes that. I think LaMelo does. Like Steve Clifford tells you all the time, LaMelo wants to be coached. Okay, so if that's the mantra of Steve Clifford, he's going to be brutally honest and he's going to demand your best every day and he doesn't care how he gets it. What about this new head coach? Everything you hear about Charles Lee is great, but it's also very different from Steve. Apparently, Charles Lee brings a lot of positivity. He is a highly energetic guy, a little Dave Canales-ish if you are a Panthers fan, but he comes in with all of the, not kumbaya, like he's going to challenge you, but there's a lot of positive energy. And I think Steve Clifford can be positive, but he gets on you if you don't do something right. I wonder if, it works out with whoever this new head coach is. Maybe if it's not Charles Lee, whoever, you know, and whoever else brings that positive energy, I mean, they might not have a track record to back up whatever they're trying to install with the new roster. And this is where Doug's theory starts to come into play. Do the players start to go to Steve Clifford and say, man, I'm just not feeling it with this guy. He's He's not getting me. And even if Steve says, hey, this is the messaging you need to roll with. It will work. Just give it time. You know, any kind of doubt might be detrimental. And I wonder if the players think that the coach isn't stepping up and telling them and giving them that brutal honesty and telling them what they need to do because the coach might want to stay away from hurt feelings or anything like that. I wonder if it actually hurts that head coach trying to help the feelings. I wonder if it actually hurts them. I, I hope that doesn't happen. And you got to have the best of both worlds from whatever head coach steps in here, whether it be Charles Lee, wh whoever it may be. I just wonder the different dynamic because Clifford is a different personality, but it's a respected, like damn respected personality. And we'll see whatever that head coach, uh, whoever that head coach is, if he'll demand that same kind of respect or if he does it and it can just be in a different way. You know, as Coach Clifford tells you. There's no one way to do it. There are multiple ways to get the job done. And maybe this coach takes a different route. And because of that different route, we see different results. I think we'd all welcome that as Hornets fans. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast. And that includes YouTube. Doug should be back with me on Monday. So as long as he's back with me on Monday, we can recap and comb through some more of this audio that we have through exit day. Again, have a great rest of your day and we'll be back with you on Monday.